What's going on, everyone? Welcome to today's pandemic update for Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023. Before we get to today's update, you may notice I'm in an N95 mask today. You may also hear behind me my air purifier is cranked up higher than it normally would be while I'm recording. There's a reason for that. I cannot turn it down today whatsoever. The mask must stay on. There is a COVID positive case in our household. So I am practicing all safety protocols that I preach here on the channel and on Twitter. So far, I am not showing any symptoms. I'm feeling fine, but that doesn't mean anything. You can take several days to exhibit symptoms or test positive. It's too soon for me to test. I am going to take my first rapid test tomorrow. I'll probably take another rapid test on Friday morning. And at some point, I think I am going to get a PCR test just to be safe. For the most part, I'm staying confined here to my room dash office and probably will not leave this room very much other than to maybe get some food delivered. I'm not going to be going anywhere. So yes, unfortunately, we do have a COVID positive case in the house. So for the next several days of doing videos, or maybe for an extended period of time, you're going to see me doing them in N95 masks to exhibit how we need to stay safe when COVID does enter the household. All right, let's get into today's update. Today, India records 3,720 new cases, and that is slightly down from uh, the past several days. I think it's safe to say India has peaked on cases. We've also seen uh, deaths are at 20 today. We haven't seen a big increase in deaths, but they're going to remain at elevated levels. Something we have to watch now. I did not pull up the article for this video. I should have, I guess, but we can show it at a later date and time. There's a lot to get through to today. But uh, there's a new variant that has popped up in India. Not XBB 116. XBB 2.3. And it's starting to rise. And it's something we're going to have to watch. If it rises enough, India could see a wave on top of a wave. We've seen this happen before. It's happened here in the United States during the holidays before. So it's something that we have to consider and watch. The potential for India to have yet another wave. All right, some good news. FDA approves first respiratory cynical virus, RSV vaccine. It's been approved for individuals 60 years of age and older. And that's some great news because they were being hospitalized for RSV. And look at this. RSV leads to approximately 60,000 to 120,000 hospitalizations and six to 10,000 deaths among 65 years of age and older. So that is some good news. Now we come to some not so good news. Jamie Foxx. Here's the update. Remember last week, I believe it was, we said there were some reports saying he may have had a stroke. We still don't know if that's true or not. But uh, his friends and family are saying, pray for Jamie. So it says here from TMZ, Jamie Fox remains hospitalized more than three weeks after suffering a medical emergency. And those closest to him say he needs all the prayers and well wishes his fans can muster. So this is not sounding good at all. While his exact condition remains secret, tightly guarded by his family, we've spoken with sources close to Jamie who echoed the same plea pray for Jamie. So it's sounding to me like uh, Jamie Foxx is not doing well at all. Mind you, he's been in the hospital for what, three weeks now? Yeah. All right, moving on to something that's going on up in Ontario. Ontario lack of a long COVID strategy may lead to little to no support for patients. So yeah, they don't really have a strategy up there on long COVID. They don't really have a plan and that's leaving well, approximately, it says here, researchers estimate 1.4 million Canadians are living with long COVID. That's leading them with nowhere to go, not knowing what to do. They're just like, well, what should we do? Someone needs to help us. And unfortunately, like we're seeing in many different countries, no one's coming to help people who have long COVID. This is a real problem that needs to be dealt with. Governments need to step in and come up with a plan to help deal with this because COVID cases are still happening. I mean, look look here, I'm precaution galore today. And COVID cases are still happening. Long COVID still happening. This never ended. The whole theory that it did end was a whole bunch of 
baloney. And here we are. So, yeah, something needs to be dealt with because this is a number that continues to increase. Canada's at 1.4 million. The United States is well over 20 million something. Now, I've lost count of where the United States is at. Are we at, what, 25 or 26 million now? It's a really high number. So someone needs to do something about this. All right, moving on to this. New York becomes the first state to ban natural gas stoves and furnaces in most new buildings. So if you're going to be putting in a new residential building in New York State, guess what? You're not allowed to put in a natural gas stove. Remember there was a report uh, a few months back stating that it could increase the potential for asthma complications and other breathing complications well new york state took the initiative to ban it altogether all right moving on to this this is here in philadelphia efforts to find viruses in feces is still backed up basically what it's saying is this is a subscriber only i'm a subscriber to the inquirer so hopefully they forgive me for using this but anywho um basically what they're saying is the wastewater system has hit a snag in philadelphia they're having a hard time trying to get this system reporting on a timely manner to the public and that's why we haven't had a wastewater update in our city since essentially i think the last one i saw was in january all right vermont updated its covid uh, levels today vermont covid levels low as hospitalizations declined to just 10. weekly covid emissions in vermont look at this dropping weekly cases dropping the weekly case report today is 116. All right, moving on to this day in COVID history. May 3rd, 2022. CDC recommends that everyone continue to wear a mask while indoor transportation hubs to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But this is no longer legally enforceable. Yeah, that's just when we lost it for transportation. And you know what? COVID should still exist on transportation. It should have never ended. It's why... It's it's a big reason why there's so many cases, especially on airplanes. Remember, there was the study uh, not too long ago stating 75% of airplanes are carrying at least one COVID positive case. Yeah, hello. It's kind of the reason why we're still in this situation, because new variants are being transmitted between countries. And while masking did not prevent every case on the airplanes, it did prevent most cases and it just worked and now it's just an open open free room to do whatever you want moving on to today's wastewater as you can see here nationally there's four regions three out of the four regions have started to rise the green one which is the west coast is still flat to ever so slightly dropping we'll call it flat moving on to the cdc map you can see here not much of an update However, we do come out here to the Four Corners region in New Mexico, and we do see some moderate sites now where wastewater is either holding steady or starting to rise. Look at this one, San Juan, New Mexico. 45,000 people in this wastewater site, and it is rising, so that is relatively concerning. Take a look at the CDC transmission map today. High transmissions at 573 counties, substantials at 410 moderates at 1516 low is at 624 counties the dominant strain in the united states is xbb15 which is at 68.8 percent xbb116 at 11.7 percent xbb191 at 9 percent xbb192 at 3.7 percent xbb at 2.4 percent xbb151 at 2.2 percent and FD.2 at 1.3%. Taking a look at the latest update from BNO News. The U.S. update for yesterday was 7,574 new cases. The average is 13,708. So we added uh, 99 to the average. States reporting 9 out of 50. In the hospital, 13,128. That just increased by 9. Just a small increase. ICUs, 1,728. That's down by 49 new deaths 185 and the average is 220 that is up by seven moving on to new jersey's update for today 174 new cases 168 probable cases and look at this this is some good news i can say new jersey had no 
reported deaths today. Hospital uh, situation in New Jersey, 174 people hospitalized, 8 people on ventilators, and 16 people in the ICU. Taking a look at Philadelphia here, which is my city here, and you will see, well, we did have the numbers for today. I'll just have to bring them back up. Here we go. Here's the daily totals for Tuesday. Significantly down from the previous day. 693 EMS calls were reported, which is much higher than the, what was it, 770-some the previous day. So, yeah, that's good to see that our EMS levels were down yesterday. Taking a look here at Mountain Indian Medical School Center, the only hospital in Center County, Pennsylvania. And they have just three... Uh, COVID hospitalizations for today. So that's good. Their number is dropping. They were up to six back on the 30th of April. Taking a look at today's uh, New York State update, 480 positive cases in the last 24 hours. 1.6% positivity rate. 1.4% is the seven-day average. Moving on to their hospitalization, 645 people in the hospital, slightly down from yesterday. ICUs actually increased by one to 73. Taking a look at Texas, we did get an update from Texas today. Their weekly totals are 3,519 new cases, 3,065 probable cases, 51 newly reported deaths, 6.19 is their positivity rate, hospitalizations in Texas is 900, and 162 people are in the ICU. That's quite a few people in the ICU for just 900 uh, hospitalizations. And maybe some of that attributes to unvaxxed people, immune compromise. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. All right, quickly moving on to the international update. You can see internationally around the world, cases are down 25%. Deaths are down 32%. But we do have places where cases and deaths are rising. Korea, cases up 5%. Deaths up 31%. Japan, cases up 14%. Deaths up 13%. Brazil, cases are down 9%, deaths are up 22%. The United States, yes, it does show our cases are down 68%. That'll probably continue because we have just eight days till this emergency officially ends. I know Congress and Senate already ended it, but at that point, we'll probably lose even more testing. And even with a spike in uh, cases or uh, an increase in cases that will come from the potential XVB-116 surge. I don't know how much of it's actually going to get detected. We solved with BA.5 last year. There was there was a surge, but we missed so many cases. It's going to be more so a wastewater thing that we have to watch, and maybe hospitalizations as well. Indonesia, 81% increase in cases, 174% increase in deaths, 137 versus 50. So that's a big increase. And finally, we'll end this on the Philippines. 85% increase in cases in the Philippines. Alrighty, that does it for today's pandemic update. We'll have another pandemic update again tomorrow. I'm going to do my best to try and stay safe. Until I see you all again next time, I want you all to stay safe as well. This pandemic is not over. It's still out there. I still know people testing positive, and like I said, COVID is here in our household. Fingers crossed they stay negative through all this, and we will see what happens. Take care, everyone. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button down below. I'll see you all again next time. Thanks for watching.